Electric cars aren't known for their electrifying speed, but Ian Wright, the designer of this X1 prototype, is ready to face off against an Italian supercar. And I'm along for the ride. Are you ready, Scott? Uh, yes, I am. All right. Let's All race. Right. Let's put a helmet on. The X1 has a top speed of 112 miles per hour. The Lamborghini can reach 205. Hey, 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 no, not ready. <laughs> know who's going to win? Well, think again. Oh, righty. The X1 has no gearbox, no clutch, and a motor with just one moving part. You can fill the tank at any 220 volt wall socket, but on this tight track, it's just beaten one of the world's premier sports cars. So, what's the X1's secret? Well, for starters, it's unusual engine. A typical internal combustion engine has more than 200 moving parts. The electric X1 has just three main components. Batteries to supply the power, an inverter to control the current, and a motor to drive the wheels. The X1's lithium-ion batteries pack unbelievable power. 400 volts at 4,000 amps, about what you get from a small lightning bolt. Next, the inverter. This power unit converts DC into AC by switching the DC current on and off thousands of times a second. By varying the switching ratio, the inverter acts as the X1's transmission, controlling the motor's torque and speed. Finally, the X1's high-performance motor redlines at 14,000 RPM and generates around 300 horsepower. That's twice as much as your everyday family car, and the X1 is half the weight. But the real reason it can beat out a Lamborghini on a tight course is its ability to maintain optimum torque from the start of the race to the finish. If you look at all the different parameters to optimize in race cars, the ability to accelerate out of the turns is, is the most important thing, and that's torque. To see how this works, let's go to instant replay. Okay. Hold it right there. After 50 feet, we've already got two car lengths on the Lamborghini. That's because the X1 is operating at a constant optimum torque, and the Lamborghini is not. In any two-wheel drive car, you've hit maximum torque just before your wheels start slipping. But because traditional cars need to change gears to accelerate, it's impossible for them to maintain that perfect edge particularly off the starting line. Well, and the trouble with the standing start with a gas engine is you've got to match the, the torque to the, what the wheels want, and that means you've got to slip the clutch or slip the wheels. So one way or another, you don't get you know, precise control of the torque, but with electric motors, you do. Ian has programmed the X1's computer to run at optimum torque whenever the car accelerates on any track surface. Its tires can handle 1,500 foot-pounds of torque before they start slipping. So the computer keeps the tires just a fraction below that critical number at all times. And the X1 maintains its maximum acceleration at the start, on the straightaways, and around corners. My stint in the passenger seat of Ian Wright's X1 electric car has been mind-blowing. And as I discovered, the electric motor has an added advantage. You can really see this with our thermal image camera. Gas-powered cars lose up to 80% of their energy through heat loss and friction. The X1 loses just 20%. In these thermal images, blue is cold, red is hot, and white is super hot. 
Even after a couple of laps pushing 100 miles per hour, the X1 is cooler than my hard-working film crew and much cooler than the Lamborghini, especially around the engine compartment. And all that heat is wasted energy. Now the X1 faces a tougher challenge. We've already wiped the floor with a sports car, but can we beat a real race car? This is John Condren's NASCAR, 550 horsepower, 350 cubic inch V8. Are you ready to race us? Well, I'm uh, willing to give it a little test. How's that? A little test will be just fine. Do you think you can beat us here in this electric vehicle? Well, I don't know. I've been watching you earlier today, and this thing is very quick. Let's race. Start it up. Actually, we're starting, aren't we? We asked that. Start it up. to beat a NASCAR. Oh, that's cool. I didn't think we would. Really? You well, didn't that, think so? They, they're proper race cars, you know? It's a tube frame. It's on race tires. Yeah. It's 550 horsepower. So and you just you left it in the dust. Off the line, that thing is really quick. It's crazy. There's no wheel spin. Uh, the constant velocity joints on that just keep spinning and spinning, and I'm just watching the whole back end of the car. <laughs> It's kind of neat watching us from behind, huh? It is. It's very interesting. It's nice view. No, it's not a nice no, view. No, it's not a nice view. Off the starting line, the NASCAR's performance is no better than the Lamborghini's. In the X1, we hit 60 miles an hour in 170 feet, about the width of a large intersection. Once again, optimum torque maintained by the onboard computer outruns pure muscle. We've all got more power than we need. It's about controlling the torque. Another decisive factor is the weight of the car. The NASCAR is nearly 3,000 pounds. Thanks to its 100-pound motor and 540-pound battery pack, the X1 weighs in at only 1,500. Half the weight to haul off the starting line. But, as I'm about to find out, the X1's advantages don't end at the racetrack. If you're building gas engine cars, if you build uh, a really fuel-efficient one, it'll be slow. If, but that's not true for electric cars. I mean, this car does 0 to 60 in 3.0 seconds. It does 0 to 100 miles an hour in 6.8, and yet it does the equivalent of 170 miles per gallon in city driving. That's around three times better than the best hybrid vehicles on the market. performing and energy efficient. I think this really could be the car of the future. Mm -hmm. 